Hello, I'm Joe Adams, Managing Partner and CEO of RSM US LLP. Thank you for joining us for this month's Inclusion Starts With I video. Today, I'm talking with John Lee, one of our partners and the national leader of our Inspiration Employee Network Group, or ENG, as well as Sadir Condesetti and Angela Hung, who are members of that group. Our Inspiration ENG engages the firm's Asian professionals and allies in career development opportunities and cultural events to help raise diversity awareness and inclusiveness between leaders and colleagues. Today's conversation is particularly relevant for a couple of reasons. First, May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And sadly, today's conversation is also particularly relevant due to recent events and recent instances of violence against Asian Americans and Canadians. There were 3,800 anti-Asian incidents, mostly against women, over the past year. That's significantly higher than 2,600 reported incidents the previous year. This increase is alarming and was even addressed during President Biden's first national primetime address. Earlier this year, the president also signed a memorandum that in part issued guidance on how the Justice Department should respond to the heightened number of anti-Asian bias incidents. Clearly, this impacts our Inspiration Employees Network Group members, their families, and allies. And I appreciate John, Sadir, and Angela taking time to join us in this very important conversation. Let's get started. John, as the national leader of our Inspiration Employee Network Group, can you give us some insight into how violence against Asian Americans is impacting members of this ENG? How are they feeling? And what can the rest of us do to support their colleagues? Thanks, Joe, and thank you for hosting this very important conversation. Now, while I certainly can't claim to speak for everyone in the community, uh, just in my conversations with members of the ENG and others in the AAPI community, I think the overwhelming feelings are sadness, frustration, and anger. You know, we've all just had enough. Uh, I think many, including many supporters, think that anti-Asian bias and crimes against our community is something that's new and, and collateral damage of the pandemic and possibly the previous political administration where anti-Asian rhetoric was commonplace and became normalized. But crimes against our community are deeply woven into the fabric of our history. You know, uh, people of Asian descent were in America. They fought on both sides of the U.S. Civil War. Uh, you know, railroads across the U.S. were built in large part on the backs of indentured Chinese migrant workers who were then banned from bringing their families to America under the Chinese Exclusion Act. And the Asians at various times in history were banned from owning property, banned from voting, banned from certain professions and holding public office, banned from testifying against a white person. You know, uh, the, the issues just go on and on. I mean, and so I think the intense and visceral feelings and reactions that people in our community are having is just a byproduct of that, and it's just been a long time coming. And, and to address the firm and our allies, you know, as a firm, I think if we continue to provide these forums for discussion, to continue to cultivate a culture that's understanding of the unique challenges facing minorities, and to continue and to continue to invest in resources to assist people in their individual journeys, that each of those initiatives will go a long way in providing some modicum of healing and hopefully spur some real change. And to all the allies out there watching this video, thank you for choosing to stand with us and to support us in this righteous fight. You know, for so long, our community has felt marginalized by the masses and invisible uh, to uh, mainstream media. And so for all of you to see us and to see our pain and the struggles we're going through and to offer a hand is critical to compelling lasting change. Thanks, John. And it's certainly uh, easy to see how much you care and uh, your willingness to really lean in and, and help. I. I it was hearkening back to our recent town hall. And really, uh, for me, it was a great learning opportunity as I heard firsthand how some of this has impacted some of our people. And really, the uh, deep emotion that has been around and the uh, frustration, I think, of it's time for change. And, and certainly, uh, that's our hope that, that we can be a catalyst for some change. Sudhir, Angela, anything to add to John's comments? The only thing I would add is to the people watching this is don't be afraid to reach out and be an ally. We need a lot of allies, right? And uh, I think reaching out, checking in with people, see how they're doing and, and get an understanding of how they're feeling. I mean, that, that really helps a lot.
It was powerful for me to see others in the firm um, because I'm a mother of two and I live in Atlanta. So um, I was feeling very scared and worried to go out and about. And it was encouraging that there's so many allies in the firm that I can talk to. So John, with the COVID-19 vaccine rolling out across the US and Canada, society is beginning to look like it's gonna return to some sense of normalcy. As already mentioned, we've seen this increase in the number of incidents of violence against Asian Americans throughout the pandemic. Have there been any other unique impacts to Asian Americans over the past year? And if so, how are those being addressed? And is there anything the rest of us as allies can do? That's a great question. You know, I'd say that these are hateful acts that are deeply rooted in ignorance and fear of people who just don't look like you. I think it really requires a deep level of cowardice and ignorance. And, and like all bullies and cowards, the best way to meet that is with strength. And so, you know, you, you asked, like, what are, what are some of the other unique impacts of this? And to kind of put a positive spin to that, I think one of the positive and unique impacts that I've seen is that for what feels like the first time in ever, uh, we're really bringing this to the center stage and we're demanding that we talk about this. And, you know, for so long, our community has remained silent and invisible. And I'm encouraged by the willingness of so many to begin speaking up. So whether you're a part of our community or an ally, you know, there's so many things that we can do. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you can just check in on your Asian friends and family, just ask them how they're doing. You can support an event in your office that's raising awareness of the issues that are facing our community. You can support Asian-owned businesses. You can attend a Stop Asian Hate rally. You can donate your time or resources to proven nonprofits combating Asian hate. You can write to your political representatives, and you call. You, and most importantly, you should, you should be calling out racism or discrimination when you see or hear it. And I think if we all do our part, we can make a better place for all of us. I have observed um, in my one and a half years in RSM that even the first and second generation Asian Americans have a difference in leadership qualities and work style because of our cultural behaviors and values. You know, to, to my surprise, I came to the U.S. at 19 for college. So I really appreciate that inspiration had brought a workshop that gave me the awareness and perspective to bridge the mindset, behaviors, and skills to have a rewarding experience and longevity in RSM. Awesome. What's the one thing you'd like for others to know or understand about Asian Americans? I would love for others to know that we are often tasked with the most difficult assignments because we are technical and we love to be challenged intellectually. We are raised to be very respectful to hierarchy and authority. So we tend to work quietly and diligently within our defined roles and responsibilities. We are trusted as a team member and team player, but we may not get promoted to a leader because we are not perceived as a charismatic or motivational, and we do not focus on networking. Yeah, Angela, yeah, I really, I think that's very interesting. I, I think it is, again, about uh, taking the time to understand others and, and what's unique about them. And I think uh, everyone is a little different. And I think it's good to know kind of the, the uh, environment and the type of person um, that that you're working with or, or uh, working together with it. And so uh, taking that extra second to learn more about each individual, I think is important in, in really having a better working relationship and, and really allowing us to even engage further on the conversation and learn even more about each other. So let's, uh, let's shift the conversation a little bit more toward our employee network groups. John, you recently took the initiative to pull together a town hall for our Inspiration group members and allies. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what the goal was and what was discussed? I think over the past year, we've seen a huge surge in hate crimes against our community, in particular against our elderly, like we discussed. But the tragedy of what happened in Atlanta, I think, really brought a lot of the hurt and the pain into focus. So after speaking with people in our community and people behind the scenes and leadership and CDI, we decided to create a forum where people can hear where our firm stands on these matters and to create a safe space for people to share their own stories. And the responses and stories that were shared during this town hall were equally heartbreaking as well as empowering. You now, people shared very personal stories of their encounters with racism. And I think we received responses from people who said that just by sharing what they were able to share, that they were able to begin that healing process. 
And I think it's empowering because there's power in sharing our stories, knowing that we're not alone in this. You know, I, I hope we all learned that, you know, what one may have gone through, others have as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure it will. I think it was, uh, as you say, it was a powerful experience for those involved and uh, I'm sure it will lead to more interaction, more conversation and, and more learning as we go on. And Sudhir, our employee network groups strive to create a sense of belonging for all of our people. How is our inspiration group doing in this regard? And what are some of the things we can do to improve, particularly during these challenging times? I personally think the inspiration group is doing very well. I mean, even before recent events, I think the pulling together of, of our people in, uh, in Asia is a big area, right? Landmass. There's lots of different cultures, languages, countries in Asia. And I've learned so much with it from our Asian community, um, just attending events and uh, being part of the conferences, et cetera. And I think we all have benefited from that. But the recent events and having the town, the national town hall was was great. It it uh, really allows us to feel that, as John said, we're not in this alone, right? I I think I was in elementary school the first time I heard someone shout, you know, go back to your country, and um, you know, it's it's sad to hear people still hearing that now, right? Um, forty five years later, forty years later, um, but sharing these stories that yes we're together we're not alone we share these experiences and to john's point we can't stay silent about this we need to talk about it and uh and i think the inspiration eng has really created some great forums for doing that um what we can do better you know one woman in in told us she was scared to walk to the office she's scared about the offices being reopened because she's scared of going there and scared of walking back uh, in, in the evenings uh, when it's darker. Um, and I think it'd be helpful in, for others to know that if there are other partners or other senior managers who are asking her to stay late in the office, if they understand that people may feel this way, um, they may think differently about making that request and thinking about how we're requiring people to get, come back in the office. So. That's what I would ask is for more people to be involved, more allies to come to these um, events and, and just listen to people. No, I, I agree. Hopefully we can continue to encourage others to, to, to get involved and to really lean in and, and make sure everyone here is comfortable uh, being here and being in the office. I think that that will go a long way. Angela, can you tell us why our Inspiration Employee Network Group is important to RSM and to you personally? And what prompted you to become involved? I want to thank the Inspiration Employee Network Group um, for kickstarting my RSM career and so many others that I know. After three months of joining RSM, I actually got to participate in a workshop. And I learned from that workshop that I had not been seen as a leader in my last 20 years of career prior to joining RSM because I was quiet in meetings where the C-suite would sat down and thought that I wasn't being a leader. Um, but I successfully executed enterprise-level implementations over and over again. So this workshop gave me that awareness of the cultural differences in leadership styles, and I modify my behavior. So it's kick-started me to start an organization within uh, TAC, um, technical Accounting Consulting, where we have 25 Asian Americans and we are part of inspiration. Uh, Sudhir, all of our ENGs are open to all of our people. You talk about allies earlier. How might those who aren't Asian American benefit from belonging to our inspiration ENG? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a question of knowledge and understanding, right? Um, as I said before, the, the Asian community, it's, it's not monolithic. Um, and the different communities have different challenges they've faced. Um, you know, my family, I'm Indian origin. My father was a professional. Uh, we didn't face financial hurdles, right, necessarily. But there are some Asian communities that came over 
uh, immigrated here in a, diff a very different uh, environment and in a different stage of the country's history. And they, they did have some financial struggles. So there are low-income, high-income Asian communities. So understanding that is important. Uh, understanding the whole immigrant experience. I mean, I think everyone in America has uh, an opinion on immigration. Maybe it's helpful to talk to recent immigrants to really get a better understanding of their experience and what it means to be an immigrant in America. Um, and, and just better understanding the issues we face. Um, you gotta lean in and learn and you'll find that uh, things are not what, appear, what they appear to be sometimes, so it, which, is, which is a great learning for all of us. So I'd be interested in hearing from each of you, uh, how has your involvement in, in the ENG helped you in your career or in your personal life? I wouldn't say I was a reluctant person to get involved. I, I gladly got involved, but I didn't realize the impact, and, I, and this is gonna sound like I'm bragging, but the impact I've had and I, I would have on others. In a sense, I just kind of think I'm the same guy I was for the last 20 years. I don't think of myself any differently. But when I went to the first uh, Ascend conference and we had a large contingent of RSM people there, the number of people came up to me and just said, oh, it's so nice to have a, an Asian partner we can talk to and relate to. And um, I realized that um, you, I, I have a certain level of responsibility to to help mentor people, to help them understand how I was successful and how they could be successful. Um, I, I just honestly never thought of myself as special enough to give people that certain guidance. And uh, that's, that's, I think, made me a better leader, made me more compassionate, more understanding. Um, on, the flip, on the other side, externally, I've got involved in external Asian organizations in, in the Philadelphia market which has led to a, just a different type of COI network that I've built, which has helped me professionally, help with business. And um, it's, it's something I hadn't really thought about that it would be an avenue. And uh, it's, been, it's, it's really benefited my career. I think a lot of people have learned a lot from you. Um, obviously, you've had a great trajectory in your career. And as you say, you, you become a role model and people are watching and and really uh, valuing what you have to say. So certainly appreciate all that you're doing in that regard. You know, at the end of the day, I think the business that RSM is in, our business is a people business and being able to meet so many other people from so many different places and to still see that those common ties that bind us all, I think it's really made a large multinational firm feel more like a family. And so being part of the ENG programs has really helped to create an environment where like-minded people can get together and create community. And I think that's really made my work life even more interesting and enjoyable every day. Joe, since we started CDI, I've really appreciated RSM's focus on inclusion. And I know we've made some great strides in creating not only an inclusive workplace, but also focusing how we can make society more inclusive. What other things will RSM do to help us progress? Great question, Sadir. I, I think in, in terms of, you know, what, what more can we do to, to create an inclusive environment here? I think a lot of it is, is, is to just provide information, provide education, train our leaders uh, so that they appreciate the importance that this has and the fact that they, they are role modeling a lot of these behaviors. You know, we've all heard the definition of insanity. You know, you can't get something different if you keep doing it the same way. So, so we need to change. We need to be more intentional about the tactics that we employ to change the outcomes. I think, um, and that that also includes, you know, recognizing and rewarding inclusive leaders. You know, s s holding them out for their example. I think we we need to keep working on refining our recruiting policies and develop processes to attract more and hire more diverse talent. Um, and finally, I think, you know, from a client perspective now, we've, we've begun the middle market collaborative that, that helps us engage with our clients on a lot of these topics and learn from each other on what's working and, and how they're impacting not only their own companies, but, but also their communities. I am so excited about the firm's promise to be the driver and influencer of diversity and inclusion. In fiscal 2020, Hiring and attrition for Asians in the firm are both the highest among minority. 
Hiring increased from 8% to 10% year over year, and attrition is 21% for the year. What steps does the firm plan to take to keep our numbers going in the right direction? Thanks, Angela. I, I think that's a great question. It's it's one thing to to bring people on and hire people into our organization, but it's even more important that when they get here, they have a great experience and that they stay. And so, you know, I, I think our ongoing commitment to inclusion is the foundation for all of our efforts relative to continuing to enhance our diverse workforce at RSM. I think our ENGs are also of integral in finding ways to enhance diversity through education, uh, publicly commenting on relative on relevant issues and topics that are important to our diverse workforce, uh, holding networking events to engage and, and build allies and town halls on relevant topics, I think are another way that bring people in. Um, and we've had to do a lot of this in the last year, in particular over the course of this pandemic. And so I think even through that time, we did continue to, to advance the ball when it came to some of those activities. I, I think, you know, our recent town hall, as we talked about with uh, our Inspiration ENG members, I think had uh, certainly was, a, was an indication of our response to some of the recent activities and violence against the Asian community. And I think all of that builds that camaraderie, that feeling of we're in this together. And I think the more you can make someone feel like they belong, um, you know, the, the more they feel safe, the more they can be themselves. Knowing that we have their back, I think that's so important that our people understand that, that they're supported and that their unique perspectives are supported. And I think all that leads to, again, people staying and thriving in our organization. I would certainly appreciate all that support, not only from leadership, but also from the rank and file and, and everyone else. So, Joe, I have a question for you, and that's specifically about our topic, inclusion, and not, ju not, not just for Asian Americans either, but just as a firm and, and throughout our workplace. Why is inclusion so important to RSM, and why is it important to you personally? Great question, John. I mean, why is inclusion important to me? I, I mean, I, I've said this before. I feel like I've always felt like like I was included, that that I that I had a, a, a place here that people listened to me and, and cared about me. And I, I believe that when people feel part of a team and that they're connected to the firm and to the strategy, that that leads to better outcomes. It leads to better business outcomes as well. And I've been, as I said, fortunate to have leaders who were willing to, to listen to me and understand me. And that's just, that's important to me that the environment that we have here is is the same way that everyone here has an opportunity to be themselves, to make a difference, and uh, to feel that they that they belong. Thank you for joining us today for our Inclusion Starts with I video series featuring our Inspiration ENG. We'll see you next time. Bye.